A man carrying a knife in each hand attacked a group of schoolgirls waiting at a bus stop just outside Tokyo, killing two and injuring 16. Take a moment to send our prayers and sympathy to the victims of the stabbing attack this morning in Tokyo. All Americans stand with the people of Japan and grieve for the victims and for their families. Ontario's progressive conservative government has backed down on retroactive funding cuts to municipalities after sustained pressure from local leaders who warned of devastating impacts to public health, child care and ambulance services. Municipalities had been pushing back hard against the funding cuts, which were announced after they already passed this year's budget, saying they would need to raise taxes or cut services to cover the shortfall. Premier Doug Ford said he heard from municipalities that they could find savings in their own budgets, but they needed more time to do so. We had an opportunity to, to run through the letter from uh, Lumpco, uh, large urban mayors. And we sat down with our, our team over the weekend, had an opportunity to speak to a few mayors as well. And uh, we've come up with a conclusion that we're going to work together. Uh, we're going to maintain the funding throughout this year. Uh, every mayor I talked to said they can find savings, so that's a, that's good news. Uh, but they said they needed more runway. We're willing to work with them, uh, give them more runway, and this will be a win-win for the taxpayers across uh, Ontario. Ontario plans to rip up an agreement with the beer store in order to allow the sale of beer and wine in corner stores, but the retailer has already signaled it will fight that move in the courts. The Progressive Conservative tabled legislation yesterday that would terminate a 10-year contract with the beer store that was signed by the previous Liberal government. The deal permitted an expansion of beer and wine sales to hundreds of grocery stores. Premier Doug Ford has repeatedly indicated he plans to broaden the sale of beer and wine to corner stores, but he has to break that agreement signed with beer store co-owners Molson, Labatt and Sleeman to do that. In explaining the move, Finance Minister Vic Fideli said the current system is a monopoly that is a bad deal for consumers and businesses. Scrapping the deal could trigger steep financial penalties, but the legislation contains provisions to nullify any such costs. The beer store, however, suggested it was not willing to accept voiding any financial claims, saying it will fight the legislation through the courts. Foreign Affairs Minister Chrystia Freeland has moved to ratify the new NAFTA deal in Parliament, while the NDP accused the government of harming workers with the deal and want the ratification process delayed. This deal risks sending Canadian jobs out of the country and drives up the cost of medication. While progressives in the U.S. Congress pressure Donald Trump to improve the deal, liberals race forward to ratify a clearly flawed agreement. This is great news for multinational drug companies, but bad news for families that are struggling to make ends meet. Democrats are actually working harder than Liberals are to protect Canadian jobs. So instead of helping Donald Trump, will Liberals work with American progressives to fix this deal? Here, here. Here. The Minister of Foreign Affairs. Mr. Speaker, let me urge the leader of the New Democrats, who allegedly speaks for working people, to talk to some actual Canadian workers. Because that is what I do every day. And let me tell you, Mr. Speaker, Conservative leader Andrew Scheer says if he is elected prime minister in the fall, he'll want to make sure the CBC is telling enough Canadian stories. 
In an interview with the Canadian press, Scheer said he'd like to scrutinize the national public broadcaster to see that it is focusing on Canadian stories. He said, we have a situation now where we have a much different model when it comes to news and media and content creation, and it's time that we look at how the CBC fits into all of that. Scheer also pointed to an increased focus on international stories and, in particular, American politics across all CBC platforms in recent years. A CBC spokesperson defended the international focus, saying the corporation is focused on covering news wherever it happens to help Canadians understand the implications of important events. When asked if he would reduce government funding to the CBC, Scheer did not directly answer, saying that he has only ever promoted promoted the idea of ensuring the broadcaster is doing the work it's mandated to do, but he did question whether the CBC's foray into soliciting advertising revenues has created a distorting effect on the media market, with a publicly funded broadcaster competing against struggling private news companies for dwindling advertising dollars.